In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about injunctions. Injunctions are civil actions that a person can take in court in order to obtain a court order requiring someone to stay away from them and have no contact whatsoever. There are four kinds of injunctions under Florida law. They include domestic violence injunctions, dating violence injunctions, sexual violence injunctions, and repeat violence injunctions. Under Florida law, domestic violence injunctions are governed by Florida statute 741.30. For a domestic violence injunction, there must be a domestic relationship. A domestic relationship is when two people are married to each other, have children together, or reside together as if they were a family. When a domestic relationship exists, if violence occurs, the victim of that violence is permitted to seek a domestic violence injunction. Violence includes an assault, battery, stalking, or harassment or it includes a reasonable threat of violence. In cases of alleged domestic violence, a victim can go to the court and file a petition for an injunction against domestic violence. They must specify the specific allegation of violence that occurred and when to the best of their ability. It's important to include all facts and allegations that are relevant in the petition itself. If things are left out of the petition, then the person may be prevented from raising it or arguing it at a hearing later. The other forms of injunctions are governed by Florida Statute 784.046. Now again, these include injunctions against dating violence, sexual violence, and repeat violence. Dating violence is when there is evidence of a ongoing or continuous prolonged romantic relationship between two or more people. Sexual violence is when there is violence that occurs in the form of a sex crime, such as sexual battery, lewd or lascivious conduct, or any other forcible felony that has a sexual component to it. Repeat violence may be one of the trickier, more bases for an injunction. Repeat violence generally covers cases where there is no domestic relationship between the parties, where there's not a dating relationship between the parties, or there is no sexual crime or sexual violence that occurred. Rather, these are the kind of cases that might occur between friends, neighbors, or even strangers. Repeat violence has a key word there, repeat. And what that means is that a person seeking an injunction against someone for repeat violence must allege at least two instances of violence, which again can include an assault or a battery with or without a weapon, stalking and harassment, or a reasonable credible threat of violence. For repeat violence, however, because there must be at least two instances of violence, Alleging one even terrible act of violence will be insufficient. Saying that your neighbor came up to you and punched you in the face and knocked you out will be insufficient for obtaining an injunction against repeat violence because that's only one act. Regardless of the type of injunction that a person is seeking, whether it's for domestic violence, repeat violence, sexual violence, or dating violence, it is absolutely crucial to keep all allegations in the actual petition itself. A person can't later on go to court and bring up the things that they didn't put in the petition. Due process requires that the allegations are put in the petition so the respondent has the ability to respond to those allegations. Now, regardless of the type of injunction a person is seeking, if they are seeking an injunction, they can go to the clerk of the court in the county in which they reside. These are domestic relations cases, so generally they will have to go to the family or domestic relations division of the clerk's office. There are no filing fees required when it comes to filing an injunction, and the clerk of the court will accept a petition for injunction without any fees, and they will have the sheriff's office serve a temporary injunction or a notice of hearing on the respondent also free of charge. When a person goes and submits a petition for an injunction, they'll have to sit and wait for a little bit. 
the injunction is given ex parte to the judge. That's a fancy legalese way of saying that the judge will get to read what a person wrote without giving the other side a chance to review it. Under the law, if a judge reviews the petition and treating as if everything in there is true, would find that based on the allegations, there's a basis for an injunction, the judge will issue a temporary injunction. If on the other hand, the judge reviews it and says, even if everything in here is true, it's still not enough. For example, there's only one allegation of violence in a petition for an injunction against repeat violence, then the temporary injunction will be denied. In any event, whether the temporary injunction is granted or denied, the judge could set a final hearing, usually only a couple of weeks after the temporary injunction is signed. Between the time that the petition is filed and the date of the final hearing, they'll also provide the respondent, the person who's responding to the petition, with a date and time of where to show up for their hearing. It's at the injunction hearing when the respondent has the ability to present their own case and legal arguments. An attorney is not legally required for either a petitioner or a respondent during an injunction hearing. However, an attorney is still a really good idea to have. What a person can and can't say, and what kind of evidence is admissible during these injunction hearings is extremely complicated. And a pro se litigant, that is, a person who is not familiar with the rules of evidence because they're not a lawyer and don't have a lawyer, won't know what kind of objections to make during the course of the hearing. And there may be plenty of evidence that's inadmissible that will be admitted because no one is objecting. And so having a lawyer can make or break the outcome of an injunction hearing depending upon what evidence is properly admitted. But nonetheless, the system is designed to allow people to represent themselves so that they can have access to the court seeking protection against violence even if they don't have a lawyer. Without fail, there will be an electronic court reporter during injunction hearings. Anything a person says during an injunction hearing can be used against them in a criminal case. So a respondent who is accused of domestic violence may want to exercise their right to remain silent and not testify at the restraining order hearing because what they say could theoretically be used against them. Their words are being recorded by the electronic court reporter, and if there are criminal charges ever filed, that recording could be introduced as evidence. This is another reason why it's so important to consult with an attorney if there's an injunction hearing. Most people won't necessarily know what kind of testimony they might give that could be incriminating. And although a person has the right to remain silent for fear that it may incriminate them, in a civil hearing, such as for an injunction, the judge can still use that silence and hold it against the person for choosing not to testify. While they can't be forced to testify, their silence can still be used against them. And so there are a bunch of different reasons why it's important to consult with an attorney. Whether or not you are interested in seeking an injunction for your own protection or for the protection of someone else, or whether you're a respondent and you are responding to allegations of violence being made against you, it's in your best interest to consult with and hire an attorney to represent you at an injunction hearing. There's a lot more that we could talk about injunctions. Obviously, there's going to be overlap with criminal cases, with the person's right to remain silent and police practices. Definitely check out our other videos. But this is a good beginning explanation, whether you are interested in an injunction for yourself or whether you're a law student or an attorney and you want to know more about the different kinds of injunctions out there. Be sure to not only like and subscribe to Lucid Legal, but leave us a comment or a question because who knows, maybe your question will be something that we answer next.